Volvo, which is one of my personal favorite luxury brands, is aiming to go full electric by 2030. And that's just nine years away, but before all that, they will start offering a blend of electric vehicles, hybrids, and plug-in hybrids. And this right here is one of them. My name is Omar, and this is the 2022 Volvo V90 Cross Country B6. Now, before we get into the whole B6 thing, I want to ask how many of you watching right now are fans of station wagons? Also, I would love to know if you're in the market for an SUV or crossover, would you consider buying a station wagon instead? Comment below because I would really like to know and I'm willing to have the debate. Also, if you already are a fan of station wagons, hit that like button. And if this is one of my first videos that you're watching, consider hitting that subscribe button because I drop two car reviews every week, so you might enjoy my content. Either way, this is the Volvo V90 Cross Country, the high riding version of the V90. And since Americans aren't a fan of station wagons, Volvo decided to drop the low riding V90 altogether and is just going to offer us the high riding V90 Cross Country. And that's okay because I like the looks of the Cross Country a little bit more. You see, Volvo is one of my personal favorite luxury brands. And I definitely think they're one of the most underrated luxury brands out there. Their recent updates and their overall recent lineup is absolutely amazing. Their interiors are one of the best in the industry. That said, let's talk about the Cross Country B6 because this is now the only engine option you have and the only trim you have, not to mention all wheel drive is standard, which it should be. The system consists of a two liter turbocharged and e-charged four cylinder engine that's joined to a 48 volt mild hybrid system and a 13 horsepower integrated starter generator. Working all together, all that stuff makes 295 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. Now, when it comes to fuel economy savings, you're only looking at an improvement of about one to two miles a gallon over the Aquan comparable engine. Not that exciting, is it? What is exciting is that this new engine is much quieter than the outgoing one. It's definitely smoother and the power delivery is just seamless. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I hate that auto stop start feature. You know, when you come up to a red light and the engine goes into idling and then it kicks back on and it feels like an earthquake, that one. Well, usually you have a button to turn that feature on and off. Well, in the V90 Cross Country B6, you don't have that option to turn it off but that's okay because you can barely feel it. This is by far one of the smoothest ways that I've seen that feature being implemented. I can't even tell sometimes that it's happening in the background. There's no jerky movements or any earthquakes going on at all. And even though this is a hybrid, this thing really moves. Just step on the gas at any speed and this thing will start going. Zero to 60 comes in at 6.1 seconds, which is pretty impressive for this. But yeah, this thing is butter smooth, extremely quiet on the inside and overall, it gives you a feeling of zen as you're just gliding down the road. So do I recommend buying the V90 Cross Country over its rivals? Let's find out. Let me give you a quick tour, and then I'll give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy this over the competition. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's do this. All right, before we get into everything else, like the pricing details, what this thing is actually powered by, let's take a look at some of the cool and interesting things that you should know about the new V90 Cross Country. So one of the coolest things that Volvo is doing for the 2022 model year of their vehicles is the addition of Google Automotive Services. So they've basically gotten rid of their native infotainment system and put in this Android-based system, and it's pretty intuitive. You've got Google Maps for your navigation, and that lets you easily find anything along with reviews, which is awesome. You get access to the Google Play Store where you can download additional apps, including Spotify. And then of course you have Google Assistant where you can ask her to do various things for you, like, hey Google, Turn on my heated steering wheel. Got it, turning on the steering wheel heater. Hey Google, set the temperature to 70 degrees. Okay, changing the temperature to 70 degrees. The whole system is very simple to use and you can even ask the Google Assistant to turn on the lights in your house or adjust the temperature on your home thermostat before you even arrive home. As for smartphone connectivity, you don't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto right now, but Volvo does plan on adding that later with an over-the-air update. Now, since everything is Android-based in here, the new Volvo gauge cluster is all digital. It's not that fancy, but you do get a full-screen map view with Google Maps, which is pretty awesome. All right, guys, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Volvo's Bowers & Wilkins sound system is one of the best in the industry. Yes, it is definitely expensive at $4,000, but it is worth every penny if you love music. You can go into the settings and pick from a couple of different sound profiles, but concert mode is by far the absolute best. So usually I like to break down the pricing and trim levels after pointing out the interesting things about a particular car, but the launch package on the Volvo V90 Cross Country 
is really cool, so I'm going to talk about it right now. It will cost you $2,800, but it will add on some luxurious features like front massaging seats. Usually massaging seats aren't that great, but these feel really nice. It gives you four zone climate control, so each and every passenger in your V90 cross country can be in total comfort. It will also add manual hater blockers for the second row passengers, and then it gives you some other things like memory seats, front seat cushion extensions, which are very useful if you're tall, the front seats also get four-way power lumbar support, and it gives you what Volvo calls a tailored dashboard that looks really classy and has some nice stitching. Now let's get into the pricing details. Pricing for the Volvo V90 Cross Country starts at $55,200. As tested here, you're looking at $68,440, and that's it. You don't have any trims like Momentum, R design or inscription. It seems like Volvo has really simplified the V90 cross country, although you do get a long list of standard features, and then you can pick between a few packages and options. So as standard, every V90 cross country comes with a very luxurious and well put together interior with leather upholstery and leather seats with heated front seats. You also get a giant and beautiful panoramic sunroof as standard. Tech wise, you're looking at this 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster display, and you also get the nine inch touchscreen display for the infotainment with Google Automotive Services. Wireless charging is also standard, which is outstanding. And then a bunch of driver assist tech is also standard, including adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, which usually costs extra. You get cross traffic alert, collision avoidance, lane departure warning, and lane keep assist and much, much more. Now, my test model has a few packages and options on top of that, including the climate package for $750, and that adds heated seats in the second row so they can be in comfort, along with a heated steering wheel for the driver. And then I also have the lounge package for $2,800, and that I broke down for you earlier on in the video. And the last package I have is the advanced package for $1,700, and that gives you a 360 surround view camera, which at first remains blacked out until you hit the 360 button, which is weird. You get a cool heads up display. It also gives you some nice ambient lighting, although you don't have any colors to pick from. It just has one color and some air cleaner thing, which I never know how those work. To top it all off, my test model has some additional options like the metallic paint job here for $695. I have a power operated tailgate for $200. The amazing Bowers and Wilkins sound system for $4,000, which is the most expensive option that you can get here. I also have the 4C adaptive air suspension for $1,200, upgraded 20 inch wheels for $800, and that brings my total price to over $68,000. All right, so let's talk horsepower and torque because there is a lot going on here. You have a two liter four cylinder turbocharged and e-charged engine, which is mated to a 48 volt mild hybrid system and a 13 horsepower integrated starter generator. And all that together makes a total of 295 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. And it is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission. And when it comes to zero to 60, you're looking at 6.1 seconds, which is not that bad. And you have a top speed of 112 miles an hour, which seems to piss people off a lot. But tell me where you're going 112 miles an hour on everyday roads. And you're not taking this to the track. So here's something interesting. Volvo has gotten rid of sport mode, eco mode, or comfort mode. There are no drive modes in here, except for one. The only drive mode you have is off-road mode. And I guess that's because Volvo thought that nobody that owns a V90 cross country ever pops it into sport mode or eco mode. Kind of weird. Now, as for the exterior design, not much has changed at all for the V90 cross country. And honestly, I don't think it needed to. To me, this is still one of the best looking wagons out there. It's a perfect balance of style and luxury. And to be honest, it looks better than some crossovers and SUVs out there. Apparently the front end did get some minor tweaks with a more prominent grille, but I don't really notice anything at all. Everything looks exactly the same as it was before. The V90 cross country still has a ground clearance of 8.3 inches. So I encourage you to check this out instead of going for an SUV or crossover. Now, before we check out the inside, let's check out the cargo capacity. You can pop the trunk by using this latch right down here. And when it opens up, it opens up to 25.5 cubic feet behind the second row. And with the second row folded, you have a massive 54 cubic feet. Hop inside the new V90 cross country. And again, it's pretty much unchanged. In my opinion, Volvo has some of the best interiors in the luxury segment. So I don't really think they needed to upgrade anything at all. Sitting in here is like sitting in your own personal sanctuary with a feeling of zen. All the touch points are very high quality and honestly much better than something you'll find in an equally priced luxury vehicle. But yeah, I have heard complaints that all Volvo interiors look the same across the lineup and they do. The S60, the S90, the V90, the V60, even the XC60 all have a similar interior design. And let me know in the comments if you think that's a problem. 
Let's get in the back and check out the rear legroom. You have a total of 35.9 inches. Let's just call it 36 inches to be even. I'm about six foot tall. That's my seating position. As you can see, I still have plenty of room. I could really stretch out back here. The S90 and the V90 offer plenty of rear legroom. The S90 gives you 40.4 inches. This again gives you 36 inches. And of course, you also have hater shades in the back, just in case you want to block the haters from seeing you. Now, before I give you my opinion on whether or not you should get the V90 cross country, let me point out a few random things that I'll have to show all of you. You have four cup holders, two in the front for the front passengers, and then you have two in the back hidden in the center armrest right over here. Pretty cool. Now, Volvo has spoiled me by giving me inscription models to test, but here is the key to the V90 cross country B6. It's a plastic key. It's not leather wrapped like you had on the inscription models. And I don't think you can get it leather wrapped again because there's no trim levels on this. Door open and close sound from the outside. And from the inside. Very, very solid indeed. Charging game wise, you have a standard wireless charger, which I'm a huge fan of. I think wireless chargers should just be standard now. So thank you, Volvo. And then the center armrest will give you two. And then the center armrest will give you two USB-C ports, no USB-A ports, which is pretty nice. Rear passengers also get to enjoy two USB-C ports right there. And finally, it's time to listen to the indicator and horn sound test here on the 2022 Volvo V90 Cross Country. Indicator first. Pretty much the same Volvo indicator. I like it. And now for the horn sound. Oh yeah. That is nice. I like it a lot. And now that I've given you a tour of the Volvo V90 Cross Country B6, which is such a long name, let me give you my opinion on how this stacks up against the competition. All right, in the United States, the only competition you have for the V90 Cross Country is the Mercedes-Benz E-Class wagon. You can throw in the Audi A4 All-Road Quattro, but really this thing competes with the E-Class wagon. To that end, the E-Class wagon starts at $68,400, while the V90 Cross Country starts at $55,200. And as optioned here with all the bells and whistles and that amazing Bowers and Wilkins sound system, which is the most expensive option, you're looking at almost exactly the starting price tag of a Mercedes-Benz E-Class wagon. So for me, it's a no brainer. The V90 cross country is the one that you should go for. And to be completely honest, if you are in the market for an SUV or crossover, that will cost you between 55 to $70,000 you should definitely test drive the V90 cross country. You have all the utility, all the luxury, all the legroom that you could want and more right here. I'm not trying to force selling the V90 cross country on you. I just don't want you to miss out on the most underrated vehicle that's on sale right now. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Peace. The only thing that disappoints me is that Volvo will never offer the V90 cross country with the T8 setup, which is currently available on the S90, and I will get an S90 in the future with a T8. Mark my words. Hey Google, tell me a joke. Why won't shrimps share their treasure? Because they're shellfish. <laughs> okay.